The second way they could do it, or the way the buyer could do it, is to assume the loan that's currently in place. Now, in this example, they would assume all of the rights and responsibilities. So if that goes south, the new owner is liable because they assumed the uh, responsibilities of the payment. If it goes into foreclosure, the new buyer is on the loan. He has assumed the responsibilities. He is going to do it, okay? Here's the good thing or the bad thing. The original borrower may still be on the loan. Just because the new buyer assumes the seller's loan doesn't mean that the lender has released that seller. So if the new buyer assumes the loan and goes into foreclosure, they could, in essence, file foreclosure against both of them still. Assumptions must be approved by a lender. Now, in the old days, FHA loans, which we haven't got to, used to be what they called freely assumable. Get this. We could call you and I, sit down at the bank, and you've got an FHA loan. We literally would just call the bank and go, hey, I want you to take Jameer's name off this and write Raymond's name, and I'll assume this loan and the payments. And they would go, okay, and then write your name. That was freely assumable. Those are loans are all now expired. They quit doing that a long time ago, like 1986. So all those loans 30 years later would have been 2016. They're all termed out. Then they went to partially assumable, meaning that you had to sort of qualify, and now they are fully assumable. So on FHA, you can assume their loan, but you have to fully qualify for it. Well, that's basically like getting a new loan, so I don't know if you necessarily would. I will t tell you, today's world, um, I'm not sure what the interest rate would be. Well, I mean, if you've got somebody that may have got a loan four, five, six years ago when the interest rates were three, you know, three and a half, four percent, it might be beneficial to assume that loan rather than go out and get a new one where you could be at seven or seven and a half. All right. So you may qualify. And instead of getting a new loan, you may just assume the seller's loan. Now, once again, it has to be approved. So basically, the difference between this subject to and the assumption is, does the bank know? If you have just taken a quick claim from the seller and, assume, and took over subject to his loan and you are making the payments for him, and the bank usually doesn't know that. That's why he's still on the hook, because when the payments don't get made, they look at the loan and go, well, Bob's on the loan, call him and and file foreclosure. As opposed to an assumption, the lender truly knows and is aware of the fact. And now when it goes to foreclosure, they may go, well, call Bill. He assumed this loan. And we may call Bob because we didn't release Bob from the original loan. Those are two other ways to acquire property. Now, before you get all excited, there is a third clause in here called the alienation clause. Sometimes you will hear it called the due on sale clause. This is the slang for it, which says, if I sell the collateral, or a better way to say it, is if I alienate myself, which mean a gift or like a quit claim. If I have separated myself from control of that collateral, the lender is going to call that loan due today. This is the clause that when you sell the property, you have to pay the lien off. It's because of this clause, because that's the normal situation, right? You borrowed a hundred, you owe 97, you sold it, you've alienated yourself. Remember, we had voluntary alienation. You have sold it. You are going to pay the loan off 
because this clause says you have alienated yourself from the house, i.e. the collateral, give us our money back. And right here, when the property sold, declares the debt due. You can't say, well, you gave me a 30-year loan. I've only paid five. I've still got 25. No, you've alienated yourself from the collateral of that loan. Therefore, you have money. Therefore, pay us off. Okay? There are a lot of reasons that the lender records these. They want to prove there is an interest, and they want the world to see it by giving constructive information by recording it in the recorder's office so that way when the title company does their search they see that lien and there's no release that means there's still an interest in the property by some lender and that has to be cleared so when the buyer gives the seller money they will file that release first to show there's no lien and then the new borrower puts their lien on it from their new bank they borrowed money on as the buyer. So it does get recorded. It's recorded in the county where the property is located. Once this, again, it gives us that constructive notice and it establishes priority. So there is priority. Now, we have talked about this whole first in, first out thing. First one in gets paid first priority. There is a slight change I want to talk about, about recording and the priority. So let's go over here and look at this. We're going to revisit something we've talked about. We have mentioned before that the first one in gets first priority. So you borrow money. I'm actually going to Let's zoom in a little bit so we get a clearer, bigger picture for you to look at. First one in from Fifth Third Bank, you borrowed $100,000 and it gets recorded on this date, 2011, doesn't matter what date. It's first lien recorded first. When you sell your house, you would pay them first that 100000 and keep the difference. That's a typical sale. Then you borrow money from Nat City as a home equity line. You borrow 50000 And that goes in by its date. Notice its date is after. We have talked about this. It gets second priority. It is a junior lien. Anything below the first lien is junior. This one happens to be second. You could have a third, which would also be a junior lien. You could have a fourth, which would be a junior. So junior is a generic name, meaning anything after the first. And the first, sometimes you will hear it called the senior lien. All right, it's the first lien, it's the senior one. Senior by time priority. This date here is higher or older, so it's the senior lien. So now what happens is this. Let's say Fifth Third calls me and they say, hey, Raymond, we really love you and we want to refinance your loan at 0% interest. And I go, yay. So you need to understand that a refinance is a legal sale with a repurchase. So what happens is it's a legal sale, meaning you're paying this off, and you're rebuying it with today's date. So it comes back in here at fifth third for a hundred grand with today's date. But notice where it is in today's date. Have you guys ever played Jenga or Tetris and you pull one out and they all slide up? So what happens is now this one is actually the senior loan, right? Because of this date. So its priority actually switches 
And this comes in as second because it's now a junior loan because this date is after that date. Mathematically, I still owe that same $150,000, right? Now, when I sell the house, what happens or what would happen? The first 50 would go to the senior loan and the next 100 would go to the fifth third. Do you think fifth third likes this? No. If you have a second lien out there on your property, what is the interest rate compared to the first lien? Now, it doesn't really matter, and I don't need to know exact numbers, but what I can almost guarantee you is the interest rate on your second loan is higher than the interest rate on your first lien, or what was your first lien, because they are taking risks at being second. They are getting paid to be second. So while these numbers mathematically still add up to 150,000, the fact is uh, Nat City now is safer because they get first money and Fifth Third gets second money and they are not going to be happy with the risk at their lower interest rate. So the, the analogy that I give is this. Let's say I'm standing in line for the new Star Wars movie. <laughs> I'm first in line. I have been here three days. There is a second person who walks up and stands behind me. They have now been there one day. And they are second in line. They are the junior to me. I am the senior line holder. I'm number one. I step out of line to go to the bathroom. When I come back, that second or junior slid up to number one. And theoretically, I should come back in at number two, which is the scenario you see on the screen. However, that person that is now number one in line goes, hey, dude, I know that you've been here longer than me. You deserve it. I am going to let you cut back in front of me and become number one. And I'm now back to number two, even though they technically have a senior lien by date, the priorities have switched that this is now number one and this is number two. This is called a subordination agreement. A subordinate, dang it. The word is subordination. A subordination agreement allows adjacent lien holders to switch priorities, even though the dates are still the way they're recorded. So in this example, Fifth Third is now first priority again, even though its date is newer than this date. So what I really should tell you is that loans get recorded by date. They get paid off by priority. First priority gets paid first, no matter what the date is. And if you see a scenario like this, where there is a lien that is recorded after, but it has priority number one, it is because they have agreed under a subordination agreement. Now, in that example I gave you, that guy was being nice and let me cut back in place. Your question is going to be, why would Nat City do that? Because it is federally mandated in all second lien positions 
they must subordinate to the original first lien should this scenario happen. All right, they have to do it, it's in essence. So what you now have are two liens that are recorded. Nat City is the oldest lien, it's the senior lien for 50,000, but its priority is back to the original number two. And the newest lien by date is priority number one because it was the original number one prior to the refinance. This is what happens in that refinancing situation. Priorities are established by the date and the, generally the loan that's purchased first is actually first lien and all of the junior liens get recorded unless there is a subordination agreement where it allows adjacent liens to switch priorities. Now that word is a very important you understand. It allows adjacent liens. You can't switch from third to first because there's somebody in the middle who's going to say no. So let me go back to that analogy. Suppose I'm number one in line, number two in line comes up, and number three in line steps up. Now I step out of line to go to the bathroom. Where do I come back in? And this is what frustrates most people when they see them cutting a line, because what they're legally should do is come back in third and go, hey, can I cut in front of you? And they switch in front of that person. Then they ask that person, can I cut in front of you? And they cut in front of each one all the way back up to first. They can't just go back in to first because the guy in third is going to go, dude, number two may have been nice to you, but I'm not. So subordination agreement only allows adjacent from second to first or third to second. Theoretically from 25th to 24th. You can't go from third to first because there's a guy in between you, all right? So it gets recorded by date, paid off by priority. And priority almost always equals date unless there's a subordination agreement that gets recorded, which allows them to flip priorities.